Hello everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another Death Guard painting tutorial, and today we are painting the big boy himself, the demon Primarch, Mortarion. This is a slightly different tutorial, and slightly different to how we normally do things around here, because this is not a box art Mortarion, this is a pallid hand Mortarion, this is a, for a commission customer, and I thought this would be a great model to show you how to paint pallid hand on, as also how to do something slightly different with an absolute gorgeous disgusting model. So without further ado we're going to get into painting him. He's been primed with wraith bone and the first colour we're going to be using is a roughly six parts contrast medium to one part skeleton horde mix and this is going to be for all of his armour. What we'll do is we'll load up our brush here. I'm using a medium layer brush for this part. What we just want to do is just want to start painting this all over the top of all of his armour plates. Just like this. This colour is very, 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 very thin. That's exactly what we want. Just kind of almost staining the armour, this colour. Because it's so thin, there's not really much of a secret to getting it on there. It's just a case of watching for any large pools of it. And if you do get some, don't worry, you can just use your brush to move it around a little bit. And just use the brush to mop up any excess. Should you have it, but you probably won't have it just because this colour is ridiculously thin. Also just make sure that you work it into all of the pitted holes in the armour. Don't worry about getting it on the trim. That's going to be a metallic, so let me go over that. Doesn't matter too much if it's already got contrast on it. And so with that done, you should have some armor that looks somewhat like this. It already looks pretty cool. Now don't worry about adding any kind of extra damage or anything like that to any of like the kind of pitted nature or any kind of death guardy stuff on it. We are going to do that a little bit later. What we are going to do instead is colour in a few more base coats before we get there. Now the colour we're going to make is a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Creed Camo and Militarum Green. And we're going to be using this on his shoulder pads. Just here. Like this. And so with that green applied, what we're now going to do is going to make a roughly three parts contrast medium to one part basilicanum grey mix. And we're just going to go over the top of it. And this is just to take the warmth off it and make it a little bit darker. And so with that done, it's still drying at the moment, but that's okay, because we're just going to move on again. We're going to paint in a few more base coats. Now, the colour that we're going to be using is Ultramarine's Blue, and this is going to be for his over robe. So we've got this, this robe that goes down here, and it kind of stops there, comes around like this, comes down like this. So what we're not do doing is this kind of area down here, which goes down to the base. And this is on all three of these little trails. We are going to be doing this on the tabard here as well. 
But the reason we're using ultramarine blue is because this is going to be our pre-shade for when we add in our black. And we want this to give us a nice kind of imposing black for this area of robe, but also just kind of have that bluish quality to it. So we take the ultramarine blue on our brush. We just pick a place to start. And I'm going to start just here. I'm just going to start painting this all over like this. Make sure to really get it in there. Just like this. And so with that done, what we now want to do is take some black Templar. We want to paint this over the top of our Ultramarine's blue. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to work on the rest of his cloak, which is this kind of ethereal, smoky area down here. It is a cloak, but it kind of devolves into this kind of smoke. I'm not entirely sure what it is, but it's weird. Anyway, we've got a lot of pots of paint open, and this is because we're going to be doing a little bit of blending as we do this. Now, the colours that we're going to make are roughly two parts contrast medium to one part Talisar blue, to one part Basilicanum gray mix. That's our first color. Then we've got Apothecary white and Space Wolves gray open at the same time. But first what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that Telesar blue and Basilicanum gray mix. And we're gonna start at the bottom. Now what we wanna do is we just wanna start painting this all over the smoky area. Like this. Getting up to a roundabout there. A little bit more. Get up to a roundabout there like that. Perfect. Then what we do is we wash our brush. And then we grab Space Wolves Grey. And just where those two colours meet, we add the Space Wolves Grey, going down into it, like that, grab a little bit more Space Wolves Grey, and take this further up. Like that. And then what we do is we wash the brush and grab some apothecary white. We do exactly the same thing. So where the space walls grey starts, that's where we first start with our apothecary white. Then we just take it all the way up to the rest of the cloak. Like so. Like that. You just want to go around doing this on all of his cloak areas. So this area, this area, and this one as well. And then we'll come back. And so with that done, you should have some cloaks 
it looks somewhat like this. What we are going to do is we are going to add a few highlights now. And the color that we're going to use first is also in gray. What we want to do is we want to use this to pick out all of the sharp edges in all of our cloak. So this is the smoky cloak, not the black one. And with that done, what we're now going to do is take some Corax White and just add this as a little spot highlight here and there on the sharpest points. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to work on the trim on all of the armor. And the color we're going to be using for that is Retributor Armor. Now the reason for this is that we've got a lot of kind of nice shading and stuff that we want to do to this, uh, this trim that will go some way towards doing the weathering on the bone armor. So that's why we're going to do this first and then we're going to, then we're going to continue on with the highlighting and stuff for stuff we've already done. So as I said, the color we're going to use is Retributor Armor. What we're going to start doing is just going to start picking out all of the trim around all of the armor pieces that we've already done. So there is like here on his leg. If you need any help with this, you can always check out the box art. Now, whilst the box art is in the standard green colours, this stage is pretty much exactly the same. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some thinned down iron warriors. I'm going to use this to paint in all the silver details. Again, just on him. We're focusing on him. We're going to leave the weapons, the wings, and this kind of smoky, bony, fleshy area just for now. Um, there are some more metallics in there, but we're just concentrating on getting him done. So what we're doing is we are painting in areas like all of these chains, any of the mail that he's wearing. We also want to paint in the front part, well, back part of his rebreather, just leaving this area and this area here. I just want to paint in these spikes. Up here. Just like that. So if you want to go around painting in all these details like this. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some thinned down Balthazar gold. We're going to use this to paint in these areas on the hanging sensors. We haven't painted in with the Iron Warriors. Just like that. What we can also do is use this to paint in the tanks. And so with that done, Again, don't worry about shading and highlighting those metallics just yet. We are going to get to that very shortly. We've just got a few more base coats on him to do. Um, so on that note, we're going to take some Pterodon Turquoise. We're going to use this to paint in the large, thick cables. These are going to be darker. So don't worry if they look a little bit too weirdly vibrant. I just want to avoid that kind of stringiness. kind of goop that's holding it together. Just 
just want to get this on the large ribbed cable. So there's one here, goes under there. This one, this one, this one. And it goes round there on the back as well. And with that done, what we then do is take some black Templar we apply this over the top of these large cables. Like this. What we also want to do is use this black Templar on any of the smooth cables that look mechanical in nature. So we've got one on his arm there, one on his arm there. There's a couple under here on the legs, for example. We just want to get this all over this like that. Don't worry about the kind of fleshy ones, but the exposed kind of wiring. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some dark oak flesh. We're going to use this to paint in all of the ribbed cable, well, not ribbed cables, all the cables with the showing wiring underneath them. So areas like this one here. Just like that. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to paint in the goop. Now we've got some here, we've got some here, we've got some here, we've got a little drip of it here as well. And the colours we are going to be using for that are Warp Lightning and Tesseract Glow. And what we want to do is we want to first take some Tesseract Glow on our brush. And we just want to pick an area to start with, so I'm going to start just here. We're going to paint that Tesseract Glow all over. Now it doesn't matter if it's a little bit messy, Tesseract Glow will add that kind of extra sort of almost like a like a blend effect onto this onto the colours that we've already added. So we've added that Tesseract Glow. Then what we do is we wash the brush and grab a tiny bit of warp lining. And then just dab it in there. Like that. Very simple. What we can do is we wash the brush, and if it's a little too strong as a fact, you can just use the brush to just lift some of it off by just sort of dabbing it gently. Like so. So you just want to go around like this, and then we'll come back. And next up, we're going to use some wildwood. We're going to use this to paint in the straps just here. On what I assume are, are blight grenades. And next up we're going to paint the, well, horn, or the bony protrusions. Now we've got two here on his shoulder pad, and we've got the ones down um, up here on the backpack as well. Now the ones on the backpack are a lot simpler to do, even though they're a little bit harder to get to. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate on here and then I'll show you just quickly how to do those ones on the back. So the way we're going to do these ones here on the shoulder pads is we're going to be using three colours. We're going to be using Agaros Dunes, Wildwood and Black Templar. What we want to do is we want to firstly take a whole heap of Agaros Dunes on our brush, like that. We just want to paint this all over the horn Just like that. I'll just do the other side as well very quickly. There we go. Perfect. Now what we do is we wash that brush, grab some wildwood, and whilst it's still wet, I'm going to take that wildwood and add it on. Going down to around about there. Like that. Then what we do is we wash that brush and grab a tiny amount of black Templar, not very much at all, and just on the tip of the horn. Just want to add it like that. So you get this lovely kind of fade 
from a, the black through to the brown to the pale. So similarly on this side. With the wildwood, wash the brush, grab that black templar, just add it to the tip, just like that. Whereas what we want to do for the ones on the on the backpack is we just want to take Agaros Dunes and just start applying this. And so with that done, we've just got one base coat left to do before we're going to do all the kind of shading and highlights. And that is going to be for the skin. And we've got his face here, and we've got this skin here, well, this kind of horrible flesh on his back. The colour we're going to make for this is a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Nasdreg yellow and Creed camo. And this is going to give us a real kind of very ill, pallid, Death Guard-esque skin tone that's perfect for what we want to do for our Multarium. Like so. Simply around here on the back. And with that done, what we now want to do is just take a tiny amount of dark earth flesh, not very much at all. We want to just add this as a little bit of shading into his face and to his skin on his back. You just want to pick out kind of around the recesses. So with that done, it's now time to add some weathering, some shading, and some highlights to all of these base coats that we've now done, because, well, he's pretty much ready. You could leave him there, but of course we're not going to. Then we're gonna move on to the weapons, and then we'll finally do the wings, and then we'll do the nerglings as well. So, for all of that armor, which is where we're gonna start, the colors we're gonna be using are Volupus Pink, Plague Bearer Flesh, and Fire Slayer Flesh. And the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna just take each color as it goes and we're going to alternate between them so what we're going to do is we're going to start with some volupus pink we've got this kind of cracked growth here on his chest so we're just going to add this volupus pink all over like that what we're also going to do is we're going to use a tiny amount of volupus pink in some of the pock marks in the armor. So we're gonna add some in here. And in here, like that. So we up here, we're gonna add a little bit. We're gonna add some in here. And I'm just picking these kind of in an arbitrary fashion. There's no right or wrong way to do this. This is entirely up to you how you want to do it. Like that. Obviously we can add more or we can not add any Volupus Pink at all. It's entirely up to you. But we're going to move on from the Volupus Pink. I'm going to take some Plague Bearer Flesh. And now I'm just going to do a very similar thing around some of the other ones. Like that. Like that. Like 
like that. I'm going to wash the brush. And then we're going to do a very similar thing with some Fire Slayer Flash. Just put some in here. Some there as well. You don't have to fill in all of the little spots. You can just leave some as they are, because the skeleton hoard is pretty good on its own. This is just to give it an extra added effect. Like that. What we can also do is wash the brush. And we can use Plague Bearer Flash with a little bit of a recess shade as well. So for example, around kind of these spikes on this knee, you can add just a little bit of that Plague Bearer Flash going in there. Like that. Add some down there. We can also use Fire Slayer Flash to do this as well. So with that done, you should be looking pretty mucky and gross. So what we're going to do is we're going to now move on and we're going to shade all of our metallics. And we're going to be using the same two colours for all of these. And they are Basilicanum Grey and Fire Slayer Flesh. Now, again, it's a similar process of just alternating it because the Basilicanum Grey makes it look really old and the Fire Slayer Flesh adds a bit of dirt and rust into it. So we'll start just around here on the face mask with Basilicanum Grey. I'm going to get that all over that Balthazar Gold that we've got there, just like that. I want to get that over the Iron Warriors as well. Just like this. So we're just adding Basilicanum Grey. First and foremost, I'm going to get this all over the mask before I do the next bit. Just like that. Then what I do is I wash the brush, grab some Fire Slayer Flesh, just add it in at the same time whilst it's still drying. Like so. Now what you can also do is you can do it in reverse. So for example, on the knee here, we can start with the fire slayer flesh, getting it all over the silver and the gold. Like that, wash the brush, and then grab some Basilicanum Grey. And add that in too. And with all that done, what we now want to do is take a tiny amount of Griff Charger Grey, and we want to use this as a shade over the top of our fleshy cables. And this is just to take some of the warmth out of them. They also just give us this really quite unique bluish sort of flesh color, for lack of a better word. Just like this. So with that done, it's now time to start adding some highlights. 
and the first color we're going to use is pallid witch flesh i'm going to use this to highlight all of the bone colored armor i'm just going to start here on the knee and what i want to do is I just want to start picking out all of the edges across all of the armor now there's a lot of them because we're picking out the hard edges on the armor panels we want to pick out the sort of well, it's not battle damage but you know the decay so we've got this little crack in the armor here that we want to add a highlight to and we also want to highlight all of our pock marks as well or at least the most prominent ones some of the tiny ones it's very difficult to highlight and with that done what we're going to do is we're going to use some death guard green we're going to use this to highlight our green shoulder pads And then with that done, what we then do is take some Nurgling Green. We use this to highlight as a spot highlight. On our green armor panels. So with that done, you should have some shoulder pads that look somewhat like this. They look awesome. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use some thinned down Thunderhawk blue. I'm going to use this to highlight his black cloak. And with that done, what we're now going to do is going to take some Fenrisian Grey. We're going to use this as a spot highlight of our black robe. So what we want to do is we just want to pick out the sharpest areas in all the tears, all the folds. Just like I'm doing here. And so with that done, you should have a Mortarian black cloak that looks somewhat like this, which is pretty cool, right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to start highlighting all of his armour trim. And the colour we're going to be using for this is Sycorax bronze. And this gives that armour a real antique feel particularly with those shades that we applied to it. So we're just going to pick out all the edges and all the rivets and things like that. Like this. And then we'll come back. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use a small amount of canoptic alloy. 
I'm going to use this to pick out the sharpest points on all that armor trim, as well as any rivets, just as a little spot highlight. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some iron hand steel. I'm going to use this to highlight all of our silver details. Just like that. And so with that done, you should have some silver that now looks somewhat like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some brass scorpion. And we're going to use this to effectively relayer all of our Balthazar gold areas. So we've got areas such as these grenades here. That we just want to start painting this all over. Just avoiding the recesses. Like so. Demonstrate on this one. And next up, we're going to highlight all of these Balthazar Gold-esque areas that we've just done with the Brass Scorpion with some Rune Lord Brass. Just like that. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to once again use some Canoptic Alloy just to pick out the sharpest areas. These details. Just like I'm doing here. And with that done, what we're then going to do is take some Skull Crusher Brass. We're going to use this. To highlight the golden spike. And with that done, what we're now going to do is going to use some deep kin flesh. I'm going to use this to highlight those cables that we originally did with Darko flesh and then shaded with Griff Charger Grey. Just adding a small little highlight around the openings and around the sharp edges. Just like that. And next up, we're going to take some Cyberite Green. I'm going to use this to highlight those thick black cables. And with that cyberite green applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some gorse blaster green. I'm just going to add this as a little spot highlight over the top of those cyberite green highlights.
just like that. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to paint in, well, we're going to highlight his flesh. And the colour we're going to be using for this is Nurgling Green. And with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to once again use deep kin flesh. There's a little spot highlight on the sharpest points of his face. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to once again use Warp Lightning and Tesseract Glow. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to start with the Warp Lightning. We've got this kind of trail of snot, I think it is, here. And we've got this area just here going down into the rebreather that we're doing with the Warp Lightning first. We just want to add a little bit of it across that bit just there as well, like that. Then what we do is we wash the brush, and this time we take Tesseract Glow second. We just very carefully add this over the top. And so with that done, what we then do is take a tiny amount of Gorse Blaster Green. We add this as a little highlight on those areas. Like that. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some Volupus Pink. I'm going to use a really tiny amount here. Not very much at all. And what we want to do is we want to use this around the bottom of the, his eyelids. Like that. And with that done, what we now want to do is we want to take a tiny amount of Pallid Witch Flesh and we want to use this to colour in his eye. Now don't worry if it looks really stark. We're going to fix that shortly. So with that pallid witch flesh applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take a tiny amount of Basilicarum Grey. Not very much at all. What we want to do is we want to use this over the top of that pallid witch flesh. We just want to build it up until it gets to a kind of mid-grey. It's going to give us that impression of him having those kind of roomy, cloudy eyes. Just like that. And so with that Basilicarum Grey applied, what we then do is take a tiny dot of Black Templar, not very much at all. And we add this into the middle of his eyeball. As his pupil, like that. And so with that done, what we now want to do is we want to take some Wraith Bone. And we want to use this to highlight the bones and horns. And with that done, what we now want to do is we want to take a tiny amount of skeleton horde. We want to paint this over the top 
of our horns and those highlights that we've just added. And what this will do is it'll just blend those highlights in. I was adding just a tiny little bit more weathering to our horns. Just like this. And so with that done, Mortarian, or at least the body of Mortarian, is pretty much finished. So what we're gonna do now is gonna move on and we're gonna paint those wings. I can't remember if that's the order I said I would do it in, but that's what we're doing. <laughs> so what we're gonna start with is we're gonna start by painting in the spines of the wings. And the color we're gonna be making is a roughly six parts contrast medium to two parts Magos purple to one part Space Wolves gray. And this gives us this kind of really nice thin bluish purple. And what we wanna do is we wanna pick a place to start. I'm gonna pick uh, <laughs> I'm going to pick just here to, to start. I just want to start painting this colour all over like this. And we want to run this all over the main spine of the wing. Like that. I'm going to make sure you get all the way around. Like that. What we also want to do is we want to run it along these areas as well. Just like this. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some black Templar and use this to paint in the spines. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to paint in the wing membranes. And the colours we're going to use are two mixes, and they're both the same proportions. What we've got is a roughly six parts contrast medium to one part Griff Charger Grey, and a roughly six parts contrast medium to one part Skeleton Horde mix. We're going to be using them at the same time. And what we want to do is we want to start with our Griff Charger Grey, and we want to start around here by just slapping it on, getting it all over that wing membrane. Don't worry about going over the spine, that is all part of it. And what we want to do is we want to go up to around about three quarters of the way. We want to go pretty quickly here because we're going to be doing all of our blending on the model like this. So we're just really just slapping that Griff Charger Grey on there. It doesn't have to be exactly three quarters of the way as you'll see in just a moment. There we go. That's about perfect like that. Then what we do is we wash the brush and then we grab our Skeleton Horde and we start painting that all over the remaining space whilst also overlapping with our Griff Charger Grey. And we don't want to do all of the Griff Charger Grey because obviously we want it to kind of go from that blue to that brownish beige. Now what you have to do is every single time at this stage that you want to get more paint you are going to have to go back to the pot because you are going to contaminate your mixes but you'll see in just a minute why that doesn't then become a problem very shortly. So we just 
keep going like this. Just watch for pooling as well. We want this to be quite smooth at this point. Again, just going really, really quickly. Wash the brush. Grab that skeleton hoard. Make sure we colour in this area. Like so. It's at this point where we're getting towards the end where washing the brush doesn't become so important because actually we are going to want to start expanding these colours in just a moment. There we go. So now that we've got that established, we've got this lovely fade. But what we're going to do now is we're going to just kind of reinforce those colours a little bit by just adding a little bit more Griff Charger Grey. Again, just being on the lookout for any excess. And you'll see because that skeleton hoard bit is still wet. The blending works. And then what we can do is grab a bit of skeleton hoard here at this end. Grab a bit of Griff Charger Grey if you want. You can also add that in at this end. And a little bit up here. Around here. Going to double dip. Just around here in the middle. Just going to add a little bit of this. like that. It should look pretty fantastic. I'll look out for some more excess still. You can just keep going like that until you're happy. with how it looks. Okay, I think I'm reasonably happy with that. Like that. And you're gonna have to make a mix each time you do a wing, but you know, this is just for consistency's sake. And so with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna make a roughly six parts contrast medium to one part dark earth flesh mix. I'm gonna take this on a reasonable size brush. So I've got a medium layer brush that I'm going to be doing this with. And what we want to do is we want to basically start stippling this thinned down mix towards the ends of our wings like this. We're just dabbing it on. Like that. Then what we do is we wash the brush and then with a clean brush, we just, where the two colors meet, stipple along like that, just to soften up that transition just a little bit. Just like that. And you can build this effect up as much as you like or as little as you like. So if we go all down here, just gonna stip all the dark earth flesh. Like that. Wash the brush. And then just where it, the two colors meet, dab at it again. Like so. 
And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to apply a dry brush over the entire wing, just not including those black splines, but the, uh, the purple, the membrane, all of that. We're now going to dry brush with Pallid Witch Flesh. And what we want to do is just want really to be very, very gentle here. I'm actually just going to brace this against the table. And just lightly running this across the edge of the spine. Whereas when we get to like these areas, going over this is absolutely fine. Kind of just in your typical dry brush motion. But when you're on the wing itself, just try and do it in a circular motion so you don't get all scratchy. And with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to use some Tesseract Glow. We're going to use this to pick out all the boils. And with that done, what we're then going to do is take a tiny amount of Magos Purple. We're going to use this in some of the wider pock marks on the wing membranes. Almost like a little recess shade. Just picking out. And next up, if you're feeling really fancy, what you can do is you can take a tiny amount of Basilicanum Grey, not very much at all, and you can just add some little veins. Around. Like that. You just, you literally just want a little tip of the silicone green. You want it to be really subtle. And with that done, what we now want to do is move on to those black spines. I'm going to take some Dawnstone and add this as a little highlight. And next up, just like we did on Mortarion himself, we're going to take some Dark Oath Flesh and we use this to colour in these cables up here. And then next up we take a tiny amount of Retributor Armour. We use this to colour in what look like sensibles 
Senses. Senses. And then next up, once again, we're going to use some Griff Charger Grey to shade over the top of our fleshy cables. And then next up, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Iron Hand Steel. We're going to use this to colour in the exposed wiring on our cables and on our wings. And with that done, what we then want to do is we want to be very careful here, take some Basilicarnum Grey and use this to shade those areas. And the reason we started with Iron Hand Steel is so that we can apply just a tiny amount of Basilicarnum Grey here. We don't need to do any highlights. Because it's already paler. A little too much silicone and grey. One thing I did fail to mention is that we were also using the silicone and grey to shade in these areas. And so what we are going to do now is going to highlight them back up using some skull crusher brass. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to work on all the smoke. So there's all this here. There's these two areas here. We've actually also got smoke coming out of the scythe, out of silence itself. So I think that's silence. Maybe that is. No, that's the lantern. And that's silence. Yes. So <laughs> this is going to be exactly the same as what we did here on the cloak, for one, except for one crucial difference. We're not going to be using apothecary white because we just don't need to because... These areas are big enough, well, they're small enough to be able to get away with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to make that roughly two parts contrast medium to one part Talisar blue to one part Basilicanum grey mix. We're also going to use some Space Wolves grey as well. So we take our Talisar blue and Basilicanum grey mix. And I'm going to start here on this one. We want to start towards the base. like this. And make sure that we go all the way around. Just missed a tiny bit there. There we go. With that mix like that, then we wash the brush, grab that Space Wolves grey, and then just where the two colours meet, kind of push it back in and pull it out as well. Like so. I'm actually just going to take a little bit of that Space Wolves grey off. It's a little too much for my taste. like so. Wash the brush, grab a little bit of that Space Wolves grey again, and just do the other side very quickly so it doesn't dry and we don't get any weird hard lines in our transition between our colours. 
I got it. Nope. <laughs> Grab a tiny bit more space for grey. And just there. Like so. And with that done, what we're now going to do once again is take some Ulthuan grey and use this to highlight that smoke. Like so. What we're also going to do with the Ulthuan grey while we've got it is we're going to colour in the wings of all the flies. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Blood Angels Red and we're going to use this to paint in the eyes of our flies. And next up, we're going to use a tiny amount of Black Templar. I'm going to use this to colour in the bodies of our flies. And then next up to finish off those flies, I'm going to take some Griff Charger Grey. I'm going to paint this over the top of their wings. So with that done, this whole top section is now finished. And it looks pretty remarkable, even if I do say so myself. So what we're gonna do now is, it's finally the moment you've all been waiting for. I'm gonna paint in those weapons and we're gonna start with the Haft of Silence. Now the color we're gonna be making is a one-to-one -one mix of Black Templar and Wildwood. And we're gonna be using this for all of, well, the wood. It comes up to around about there and it comes up the side to around about there as well like that. What we also want to do is we want to colour in this handle here. Just like this. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some thin down iron hand steel to paint in all of the silver parts of both our weapons. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thin down Retributor armor. I'm going to use this to paint in our gold details. So, for example, on the scythe here, got the sense here. We've got this kind of housing around it. 
And we also want to color in this little bit here and the halo on the skull. The skull is actually meant to be silver. I'll do that. Go back and do that in just a second. <laughs> what we also want to do on the pistol, I want to color in a little fly icon down here. Like so. As well as the skull design. And with that done, we're going to colour in the remaining details on the pistol with some Balthazar gold. And so with that done, it's now time to add some shades to those weapons and we're going to be using three different colours. The first one is roughly six parts contrast medium to one part wildwood mix. We've also got fire slayer flash and basilicanum grey open as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with that six parts contrast medium to one part wildwood mix. And we're going to use this to shade over the bones and this top part of the scythe. kind of like the main housing we want to come all the way down to here just like this Like that. What we also want to do is we want to use this wildwood mix to shade our Balthazar gold on the pistol here as well. It doesn't have to be 100% neat. There's a reason we've got all of the colours open. We do just want to concentrate it just around here. Just like that. Then what we want to do is we want to rush the brush. And we want to use Fire Slayer Flesh and Basilicanum Grey to shade the rest of the details. So firstly what we're going to do is we're going to use some Fire Slayer Flesh to shade the gold. Just here. Like that. What we're also going to do is we're going to add a little bit of fire slayer flash, just certain areas on the silver, like that. Then we wash the brush and grab some basilicanum grey and add this over the top, mixing it all together. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some Volupus pink. I'm going to use this to paint in the kind of organic matter just around here. And with that done, we're then going to take some Eandon yellow. 
I'm gonna use this to paint in the cable just here. With that done, it's now time to add some highlights. So what we're gonna do is gonna start with some pallid witch flesh. I'm gonna use this to highlight those bones. And with that done, what we're now going to do is going to use some Stormhost Silver to highlight all of our silver details. And so with all that Stormhost Silver applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to layer up the barrel of Lantern with some thinned down Rune Lord Brass. Just like that. And with that done, what we're then going to do is take Skull Crusher Brass. I'm going to use this to layer up the sensor. On the, on the side. I just want to do this on the sensor here. Just like that. And with that done, what we now want to do is we want to take some canoptic alloy and we want to use this to highlight all of the remaining areas. So we want to highlight the, the pistol barrel. We want to highlight the skull decorations back here with the canoptic alloy. We want to highlight, highlight this little fly icon down here as well. As well as highlight the sensor down here. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Bane Blade Brown and use that to highlight the staff. And with that done, what we then want to do is take some Achillean Green. And we want to use this along either side of our, of our pink. Just leaving the pink at the tips. Just like that. And with that done, we then take some Tesseract Glow. We want to apply this across the warts and boils going down the middle of the staff just here. Like that. And also just under here as well. like that and then next up we want to take a tiny amount of black templar and we want to draw in some hazard stripes on the yellow go 
table. Starting at this end, I think. And so with that done, Mortarion is finished. All that's left to do is to work on those nurglings. That's exactly what we're going to do. Now the recipe is going to be the same for all one, two, three, four, five of the nurglings. And well, we best get started. So we're going to start with all of their flesh. And the three colours that we're going to be using for this are Gilliman flesh, Plague Bearer flesh, and Volupus pink. And what we want to do is we want to start by taking some Plague Bearer flesh on our brush and just paint this all over some of their skin. Just trying to decide which one to start with. I'm going to start with this one. So you just want to start painting this blade bearer flesh all over like this. Like that. And then what we're going to do is actually we've just got a little bit more in there. Then what we do is we wash that brush, and grab some vitamin flesh, and just over the top of any kind of tentacles, whilst it's still wet, we just want to add this vitamin flesh like this. We can also add a little bit, a little bit of it to just any other areas of the skin that you want to add it to. So I'm just going to add a little bit of it around here on the body. Pop a little bit of it in there, like that. Then we wash the brush and grab a tiny amount of Volupus pink, just at the tip of this tentacle. Again, whilst it's still wet, I'm just going to add that Volupus pink. And similarly, just add a little bit of Volupus pink into wherever we've added some more of that stuff, like so. Got another tentacle here coming out of its face. Just going to get that Gilliman flesh. Whack it all over. Then grab that Volupus pink again. Like so. And with that done, we're now going to take some shyish purple and we're going to use this to paint in their robes. We'll start on this guy. Down here. And with that done, we're then going to take some Agaros dunes. I'm going to use this to paint in the horns and their teeth. 
if they've got them. So like this guy's got teeth. And this one's got teeth. But not all of them do. Well, they might. Just can't see them. <laughs> And so with that done, it's now time to colour in the rest of the details. Now, we've covered how to do all of these already, so we're not going to cover them again in detail. Instead, what we're going to do is just kind of show you the order in which that we're doing, which way we're doing them. And the place we're going to start is with the wings on both of our flying nerglings. And we've got that same six parts contrast medium, two parts Magos purple to one part Space Wolf's grey. And that's because we're going to be doing this on here, only a little bit smaller. Uh, so what we're just gonna do, is just gonna start painting them by doing the spines once again. With this mix. And with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna move on and paint the metallics. Now again, we're gonna be using exactly the same techniques as we've used twice now on this, on this video. Uh, so again, not going to show all of it, but we are going to want to paint in these areas like this canister that's being carried here and the sensors here, the bells there, the top of this staff, this little medallion hanging off this Nurgling, the mask. <laughs> so basically just paint the metallics using any of the recipes that we've already discussed. So using Iron Warriors, Iron Hand Steel, Balthazar Gold, or Retributor Armor. It is entirely up to you at this point. I'm just doing Iron Warriors down here, for example. And with those metallics all done, as you can see, I've also done the smoke in the same manner as this cloak and that smoke up there and what we're going to do now is just take some blood angels red i'm going to use this to paint in the lenses on this gas mask wearing critter and with that done all that's left to do is to paint in the staff that this Nurgling's carrying, and we're going to be using that one-to-one -one mix of Black Templar and Wildwood for that. So with that done, our Nurglings are effectively finished. There's a few highlights that we are going to add. Well, one highlight that we are going to add, but we're going to add that a lot later. In fact, we're going to be doing that highlight when we dry brush the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the base, and that's what we're going to paint now. So the colour we're going to use is Basilicanum Grey, and this is going to be for all of the rock. And so with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to use two colours, Agaros Dunes and Fire Slayer Flesh. And we're going to be using this for all of the kind of pimples and disease and all that grossness that's kind of growing in and out of the base areas. So what we do is we first take some Agaros Dunes and we pick an area to start on. And I'm going to start just here on this one. And I'm just going to fill this up with Agaros Dunes. Like so. Then I'm going to wash the brush and grab a small amount of fire slayer flash and just dunk it in there as well, like that. Similarly, all the uh, kind of stuff that's growing around, 
just going to use agarose tunes and it doesn't matter that it's already basilicarum grey because this is kind of disease that's growing out of stone so that's okay well it's not okay nothing's okay about morty not a well man And so with that done, what we then want to do is take some Tesseract Glow. Not very much of this at all. And we just want to add it around any of the kind of particularly sticky areas. Like that little piece of rock just there that I've just done. Same here. And here. A little bit there. Like so. What we can also do with the Tesseract Glow, we can just add a little bit of it into those Agaros Junesy areas. And with that done, what we're then going to do is take some blood for the Blood God. I'm going to use this to paint in any of the maggots. Again, just over the top of that grey or even that fleshy Agros Junesy area. So you've got them. Doesn't really matter. Just gonna give them a well that disgusting blood maddock maggot blood maggot. Style finish with a bit of variation depending on what colours you put over it. Which is always nice and helpful. And so with that then, what we're now going to do is we're going to colour in all of this negative space around the base and I'm going to be using a texture paint to do this. And the texture paint I'm going to be using is Sterling Battlemire. But as I do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of carve out some little craters because I want to add some toxic sludge. And the way we're going to do that, I'll just demonstrate that in just a second. Is we're just going to get this stolen battle wire. Push that using your finger. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to get that stellar battle mire all over like this, going right up to the rock. And then whilst it's still wet, like it is there, I'm just going to use the texture spreader to create a pool. Like that. And when it dries, what you'll see is you obviously get this kind of gap in the texture. It's not immediately obvious now because it's not dry, but um, yeah. Then we're going to fill those in in just a minute. Well, in a little while once this is dry. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we are going to dry brush all of the base with some Tyrant and Skull. Just before we do those toxic pools. Now what you can do here is you, well, first and foremost, you definitely want to dry brush all of that soil. Just like this. But what we also want to do is we want to dry brush the rocks with the Tyrant Skull. Just like this. And then what you can do as well, is you can dry brush the nurglings as well. Just very gently. Like that. And 
And with that done, what we then want to do is we're going to take some Dark Angels Green. And we want to apply this to where we're going to put our toxic pools. Just like this. And with that Dark Angels green applied, what we're then going to do is take some Nurgle's Rot. I'm going to put that over the top. Now you can, the more you put on, the greener it will be. The less you put on, the more of that Dark Angels green that will shine through. So, kind of go at it with the consistency how you like. And with that done, all that's left to do is to paint in the rim of the base. And I'm going to be doing two thin coats of Corvus Black for this. And there we have it, Mortarion of the Pallid Hand, though professionally of the Death Guard. <laughs> the Demon Primarch himself is finished in this alternate colour scheme, and I think he looks gorgeous in that disgusting, diseased, decayed way that only the Death Guard are able to muster. It's a lot of fun to paint these big Supreme Commanders. I always enjoy it and I really enjoy making the contrast paints do their thing across such large surface areas Just because you know, for, I mean for something like the Death Guard the contrast paints were absolutely Intended for them. There's lots of organic textures and lots and lots of areas for that contrast paint to run into but still It's very impressive how it's worked out and I'm really really pleased if you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you'd like to support me further, like these legends and bosses that you can see on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.